Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. We're here on a wintry Melbourne day to talk about the brand new Canon G7X Mark III. Now this is a premium compact camera. It has a very high picture quality thanks to its uh, one inch sensor, which is very large for a compact camera. And the G7X Mark II was a very popular option amongst vloggers. And we're gonna see that that trend continues. Many of the updates and improvements on the Mark III here are gonna to continue to focus on that area. Now we'll get to those without any further ado. Let's start by taking a look at the camera. Physically, this is very similar to the G7X Mark II, which means it's a compact camera that will fit comfortably in a jacket pocket, a purse, or similar, making it a great option for someone looking to reduce their size and weight. Compared to the Mark II, it does have a deeper hand grip, which makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold. We've got the standard array of buttons and dials here, including the mode dial and exposure compensation. The combination of a back dial and a front lens ring also combine to give you good manual controls over your settings. Like the Mark II, we have a tilting screen that's good for various angles, including selfies, of course. The touch screen is also extremely well implemented. It's very responsive, it's very easy to use. Combine that with Canon's easy menu system, and that means that even new users are gonna be able to navigate this camera without a lot of trouble. We have a USB and HDMI port, and very notably, we have a mic jack. This is new on the Mark III, a big feature here. This is gonna allow you to attach an external mic so you can get higher quality audio. Mic jacks on compact cameras of this size are very rare. So this is very excellent for a video shooter, a point that we're gonna discuss later. At the bottom here, we have the SD card and a battery. The battery is fairly small. It doesn't have horrible battery life, but you're probably gonna ha wanna have more than one battery on you, especially if you're gonna be out for most of the day. So the G7X Mark III has a one inch size sensor, which is the largest sensor size that you're gonna find on a, uh, a camera of this size. This puts it in the premium category. It's gonna give a very high image quality, akin to something like a Sony RX100 uh, or Panasonic TZ110. It's also a 20 megapixel sensor, which is a lot of resolution for a camera of this size, again, uh, which is gonna be, give you plenty of room to crop in on your photos or do enlargements. Now, the sensor is very similar to that on the Mark II. It's the same resolution and the same physical size, but Canon has said that there are some improvements uh, in uh, overall picture quality and low light performance as well compared to the Mark II. The lens is the same as on the Mark II, which means it's a 4.2 times zoom lens with an f1.8 to 2.8 aperture. That's quite a fast aperture. That's gonna give you some good low light performance in darker environments or allow you to shoot some shallow depth of field work as well. And a 4.2 times zoom is a good you know, zoom range that's gonna allow it to be flexible and versatile in a variety of situations. It's a nice medium ground because usually on these cameras you see either a fast uh, aperture lens but very little zoom or a lot of zoom but not as fast of an aperture. And this one kind of strikes a nice medium balance giving you some of the benefits of both. The G7X Mark III does sport a new Digic 8 processor. This is above the Digic 7 processor that was in the G7X Mark II. This is gonna give it some faster performance potential than the Mark II. A uh, part of this we can see in the uh, 30 frames per second raw burst shooting mode uh, that allow you to capture a lot of frames really, really quickly, which is very nice. In terms of autofocus capabilities, the G7X Mark III is quite fast and snappy when shooting in single shot mode. And in particular, its facial detection is quite solid, very, very fast, so it means that focusing is quite easy. When we go to continuous autofocus, we do see a bit of a performance drop here, and we saw that on the G7X Mark II as well. Uh, it is noticeably slower in continuous autofocus, which means it's not unusable, but it's not really designed as a, a really sports or action-centric camera. You can make it work, but it's, um, it's not the strength of the camera, certainly. And we're gonna to touch on um, the implications for that in terms of video as well in just a moment here. Speaking of video though, as teased, this is the main area of improvement on the G7X Mark III. It's gonna particularly excite vloggers. So first off the bat, uh, it can shoot 4K video at up to 30 frames per second. It's not a particularly shocking feature these days, but it's a necessary improvement over the G7X Mark II, which topped out at 1080. The 4K video on the Mark III is fantastic. It looks really sharp, very crisp, and there is no crop at all, which is fantastic news. It also has improvements to slow motion. The Mark III can shoot 1080p at up to 120 frames per second, giving you some nice slow-mo footage that's quite slow in full HD. The Mark II topped out at 1080p 60. Now, one thing I haven't touched on yet is the built-in image stabilization on this camera. That's gonna be helpful for both photo and video. In photos, it's gonna help you when you're at the extreme edges of the zoom range to stabilize your shots. It's also gonna help with low light shooting, but when you're shooting video, it's gonna make your, your shots be a lot more stable when you're shooting handheld to allow you to do movements like walking as I'm doing here without having a lot of shake and jitter, giving just an overall more professional look. Another feature I really like, which is carried over from the Mark II, is the built-in ND filter. 
So here's a shot I'm shooting at 1 50th of a second, f2.8 in daytime. Many videographers are used to this. It's way overexposed, obviously. However, if I turn on the internal ND filter here, all of a sudden I'm able to shoot at these faster apertures. I don't need an external ND setup. I don't need any fancy stuff here. It's all internal. That's a really handy feature. Lastly, the camera does come with some YouTube live stream functionality, which is a pretty unique feature. Sadly, it's one that I wasn't able to test on my time with the camera, but perhaps we'll see a video on that in future. But it just opens up a few more possibilities there as well. So let's do a vlogging test here because that's gonna be a popular use for the G7X Mark III. The Mark II was already very popular with vloggers. The Mark III having 4K video now and a mic jack is gonna make that a lot more so. Now the mic jack is a really key thing here because that's almost impossible to find on a compact camera. So that's gonna give you access to a lot higher quality audio. I'm actually not using that in this instance. I'm just using the, uh, the in-camera audio, but uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier to attach either a shotgun mic or a lav mic setup to you. Now there is no hot shoe mount on the top of the camera. So attaching a shotgun mic, you will need like an L bracket or something to rig it up, but that's a very simple solution. Uh, obviously having the flip up selfie screen like we had in the Mark II means I can see myself easily and, and make sure that I'm nothing's going wrong. With the image stabilization on the camera, let's do a little bit of a walk and talk here. You can see it holds it nice and steady so I can, I can do this easily without it kind of jostling all over the place, which is really nice. The only thing I would really say in terms of vlogging, and this is a, a weakness of the camera in general and one of its only weaknesses I would say, is the continuous autofocus system. This is not Canon's dual pixel AF system. It is a little bit slow. So I'm using face tracking on myself right now. As long as it's got me, it doesn't hunt. It's not, you know, kind of all over the place. It is very stable. So that's good from that perspective. But once I change my position radically here, it's going to take a little while for the autofocus to kind of keep up and change its, uh, its AF so it's on me. So it's not something where you can, you know, really be kind of all over the place and have it quickly change up and, and keep up with you immediately. It is a little bit slow from that perspective. But other than that, very, very strong vlogging potential here. Overall, I think the Canon G7X Mark III is a great little camera. It's an easy to use compact option with high picture quality and a flexible zoom range. But again, the real story here is for video shooters. Being a compact camera with a flip up selfie screen, 4K video with no crop, a built in ND filter, image stabilization, and a mic jack, I think is a feature set that a lot of video shooters and vloggers looking for a compact option are really gonna flock to. In terms of negative, as mentioned, I do wish the continuous autofocus performance was stronger. They could have uh, done that a little bit better, I think. It's not unusable, but it could have been done better. And uh, lastly, it's a little bit too bad that it doesn't have a viewfinder on this camera, although I do understand the trade-off in order to keep the price down. Now, the Canon G7X Mark III is going to be out in August of 2019. You can place a pre-order now on our website at www.digidirect.com.au, or you can come visit us in store and place a pre-order there as well. If you're watching this video after August of 2019, come to our, one of our stores and you can test the camera out for yourself. We have stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, the Brisbane and Melbourne CBD, and Cannington, Western Australia, which is just outside the Perth CBD. Thanks, guys. Take care.